Hello everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial video. In this video I will show you how to paint Tomb Banshee. Here is the list of colors that I'm going to use on this miniature. The miniature is assembled except the side skirts with the side arm and the top hair and primed in Abaddon black. The first color I'm going to use is Celestial Grey. I use a small base brush and from the middle part of the skirt I start to draw downwards some lines which then I widen them out I also do the exact same method with the side skirts. And also that small part from the top rope section. Now I'm going to use Incued by Darkness. And I start base painting the top section. Again, I start to draw lines downwards and making a cross section with the celestial gray areas. Let's not forget also the side skirts. Now I'm going to use Nihilite Oxide Technical. And again with a small base brush. I start to cover the extra gray areas and also start to blend the incubi darkness and the celestial gray area just to cover that section as well so it will start to give a nice blending. Once it is completely dry, then I am going to use Uthon Grey. And with a small dry brush, I start dry brushing the lower section of each skirt and robe part. Now I'm going to be making a mix of Lamia Medium Colia Green Shade, a 3 to 1 mix. It is quite di diluted, so and with the first layer I just covered the whole section, including the ink by darkness area.
give it plenty of time to dry. Once it's dry, I am going to use the same technique, but I am holding upside down the miniature that I want this watch to flow more towards the Incubi Darkness painted areas. And it slowly starts to make a nice blending for me. Doing the same technique again. I'm adding a third layer so that the wash is actually working for me and making a nice subtle transition from light to dark. With the third layer you can start to see how much actually it blends together the two color so i'm adding a fourth one and this time i'm really close towards the incubi darkness area so that I have that really smooth transition Now that I'm happy with the transition, I am going to use couple light green and start layering and also highlighting the sharpest features in the incubi darkness areas. I also go just a little bit over where the blending is. And now I'm going to finish it with Cyberite Green. This time just highlight. And where I went a little bit over with the Cabalite Green, I am blending it together from the bottom. So it really gives that nice smooth transition. And the ghostly rope is now finished. I can move on to the ghostly skin. For this I'm going to use iron rack skin as a base color. I start covering all the banshee skin. The reason that the miniature is so assembled is basically because of the skin, because as you can see some of the parts are really hard to reach. And for myself I find it much easier to paint it in this way.
Now I'm going to use another mix, which is Draken of Nightshade, mixed with Lamia Medium, 1 to 3 part ratio. And start applying it in all the Iron Rack skin areas. I really enjoy using Lamia Medium mixing with my shades because it really undertones slightly the miniatures. If I would be using without it, it would be too intense blue color, which I'm not really looking forward to it. Once the wash is completely dry, then I'm going to use Deepkin Flash. And with a small layer brush, I start layering all the areas. I'm trying to put extra detail on the cleavage, on the face, the eye sockets, the cheekbone, the nose, and also the arms, the fingers, the elbow. So with this color it's really nice to pop out all these highlighted areas. Now I'm going to use Screaming Skull to base paint all the teeth. Now I'm going to use Druki Violet uh, wash and with a small layer brush uh, I don't really use too much just barely enough to put it towards the eye sockets also around the mouth just to give a shade for the lips and also inside of the mouth so that with the Screaming Skull Teeth, it sort of blends together to give that shade. Once the Jerky Violet is completely dry, then I'm going to use Reichland Flesh Shade Wash. And again, I don't really use too much. I mainly apply it where the darkest features can be seen on the skin, such as the cleavage. I also use a little bit just under the chin. I also apply a little bit around the cheekbone area just to give it a fleshier effect on the miniature. I also use it on the hands so that to have that nice transition of that flesh in my eyes. And with this, the flash is complete. Now I'm going to focus on the corset. 
for the corset I'm using Rhinox Hide as a base paint with a small layer brush the details are quite small especially which areas I painted already I don't want to get this paint on it so I'm taking my time and just base painting the corset I give it a wash with known oil shade. I'm giving an all even surface cover on the corset. Once the wash is completely dry, I am using now Gorthor Brown and start layering all the leather corset parts. And finishing it with a highlight of Steel Legion Trap. With a small layer brush, I just start adding at the most raised surfaces and sharpest features. Except the lower hip part. With the paint blade brown, I use a small layer brush and start covering all the straps on the corset. Now I'm going to use Stormhost Silver and with this color I start highlighting the lower hip part of the corset. Now I'm going to use Mechanica Standard Grey on the collar hood. I am using an old brush, which is good for this, to dry brush these small details. And now I'm changing a brush, a small layer brush, and start highlighting with the same color. Now I can move on to the hair and eyes. The first thing I'm going to do is use Abaddon Black. 
and start covering the eyes. Now I'm going to use Mechanical Standard Grey on the hair. So I start base painting all the parts of the hair. I'm going to use Noon Oil Wash on the hair. I start applying it with a small layer brush. Once the Noon Oil Wash is completely dry, I am using Karaberg Crimson Shade and start applying it on the hair. Once it is dry, it is going to be looking a little bit more purple, but that is absolutely fine. That is the actual color that I'm looking for. While the wash is drying, I am using white scar and just on the center of each eye, I cover it. So that with the first layer of black, I am going to have on the model uh, actual eye lines. Now that the first wash is dry, I am adding a second layer and this time I'm trying to put more towards the bottom section and also in some random areas which I would see that 
the hair would have a sort of shade. Now that the wash is dry, I am using Demon at Hide. And with a small layer brush, I start layering each hair, mainly from the top areas. Now it is also good to use a small dry brush for these cases, but it is also a nice practice to make each hair a bit more highlighted and also in my perspective the hair it is quite rich therefore it is nice to have a bit of sharp highlights on each layers how it separates And finishing it with a fine highlight of slanish grey. Now on with this one, don't need too much. I use mainly towards the end of each hair. Just a little bit of over the very raised top. And on the top hair just to have the nice dividing lines. going to paint the chill dagger and the first color I'm going to use is Inky by darkness and start base painting the blade if you want you can also paint it during the robe however with the richness around it with the hair I would say it is best to do after once the hair is done. Now I'm going to use Cavalite Green and start layering the blade. and finishing it with Cyberite Green as a highlight.
On the handle I'm using Balthazar Gold as a base paint. I want to leave the dagger a little bit dark and dirty, so I'm just giving a wash of Agrax Earthshade to it. Now as an extra detail, I am using Rhinox Hide and with a small layer brush I just add a touch on each of the fingertip just to give a dirty nail to the miniature. And the miniature itself is complete. Now I can move on to the base. I am using some skulls, some resin parted rocks and start covering it with astron granite texture, the base itself. So as you can see I glued first all the parts which I'm going to be afterwards painting as well and start applying the astro granite all over the surface. Leave it plenty of time to dry. After 5 hours that is completely f dried out, uh, I'm using Noon Oil shade and start applying it onto the astro granite areas. Once the wash is completely dry, I am using Mechanica Standard Grey and with a small dry brush I start dry brushing the astro granite areas. Now I'm using Xandri Dust on each skull as a base paint. give it a wash with Agrax Earthshade and also I wash the resin rock parts. Once the wash is completely dry, I am using Morgast Bone on the skulls. I use a small dry brush and first I start dry brushing it. And 
and also with dry brushing, Karak stone, all the resin stones. And finishing with a button black, I dry brush around the outer rim, as you can see. Sadly, my camera's memory card has been filled out, so I couldn't really record it, but it really gives a nice effect onto it. Now I'm moving back to Morgus Bone, and with a small layer brush, I start highlighting of each skull, making sure that leaving the parts which may be a little bit touched with the Abaddon Black to leave it as it is because I really want to have it like as a darkened down area and now I'm going to use Niolike Oxide and with a small layer brush I mainly just add at the very center where the rope meets with the surface just to give a little bit of glowing effect onto it I am applying more time turf grass into some of the random areas. I find the grass sometimes a little bit too big, so I use a stencil and just cut it into a size which I'm happy with. And just placing it to the base. Now I'm going to use again a baton black and just start base painting the rim of the base. And there you have it, the finished tomb banshee is complete. I hope you find this video useful and helpful. If you enjoy these videos I make, please do subscribe to my channel, leave a like which helps out the channel a lot and also hit the bell button to be notified for future video tutorials. Thanks for watching, cheers!